Up here in Seattle, training camp's just about to start. For a lot of teams, it's actually already started in the last couple of days, but ours starts tomorrow, Saturday. So, excited about that. Um, I didn't follow OTAs very much this season. I heard Brandon Mabane and Baratka Atkins both impressed, which is definitely good because, you know, we need that defensive line to show up this year. It was a big reason why we underachieved as much as we did last year. Um, okay, I don't know how much I'll be talking about training camp when it actually starts, but we'll see if I can keep up on things. Okay, uh, what's going on in the NFL right now? Um, a bunch of picks are starting to sign now. Uh, Ted Ginn signed. Um, all the Eagles picks wound up signing now. Um, Joe Thomas also got a big cash deal, I believe bunch of these people starting to sign now right before camp, which is good. I still think these rookies get paid way too much. It makes no sense why you would give a rookie, no matter how high he was taken, a bigger contract than a proven superstar veteran, but that kind of stuff happens. Like, for instance, Mark Bulger just signed a six-year, $62.5 million deal with the Rams, and he's a proven pro bowler and an elite quarterback in this league, and yet it seems likely that one of these rookies... Um, like Jamarcus Russell, is going to get a contract just as big as him, if not bigger, even though he hasn't played a snap in the NFL. I'd, I'm not seeing it. But anyway, uh, you know, good for the Rams. They needed to lock him up and get that distraction out of the way because it was starting to become a real potential issue of discussion, and we could have even seen him hold out. Like Larry Johnson's doing right now, and I don't know what's going to happen there, but... You know the Packers are never going to give up enough to get him, so he's kind of stuck. I don't know. I can't think of very many teams that would want to trade for him. Especially with everybody so afraid of him breaking down. Maybe like Tennessee or something might be willing to pull something. I don't know. Um, and uh, let's see. The Vic situation keeps getting uglier. Uh, Nike and Reebok suspended the sale of their Vic-related merchandise, so... Obviously, things are just getting worse and worse, and Atlanta actually said that before the NFL interview intervened, they were going to give him a four-game suspension. So, that's pretty much a guarantee at this point, and the NFL will have to step in and apply whatever other punishments they want to. Um, you know, I'm thinking he's going to get a season. I don't see how you can give Odell Thurman a season suspension, and by the way, they're still not letting him go back to the Cincinnati training camp or something like that, which I don't get. He served his time. They need to, you know, let him go play football again now, I think. So hopefully they let him go do that. I don't see how you can give, you know, Tank Johnson or Pac-Man Jones the punishments you've given them and not give Vic worse, at least the same. You know, I'm thinking a year suspension. And, um, you know, things keep getting... And um, another big news... Strahan, a no-show at the Giants camp, and he might retire. This is big. This is... Well, actually, it's not as big as some would make it out to be. Strahan's obviously getting a little older, and they got a couple of young guys that are just waiting to replace him. At the same time, he provides veteran leadership and a great presence off the edge, great against the run and the pass. So, um, he's contemplating retirement. I don't. I really think that this never would have come up if Co if they just fired Coughlin. I really think that would have been the best thing to do. So now, but as for the Giants, they have good depth at the defensive end spot with players like Matthias Kiwanuka. I like this kid a lot. Last year, he showed me a lot when he played. Justin Tuck, everyone's favorite backup defensive end. So um, interesting situation in the Giants camp. I think they're already a bit of a mess as it is, so it's going to be interesting to see. You know, back to Atlanta, though, real quick. Work done, just had surgery. Looks like he's going to miss the rest of training camp, maybe, uh, and probably the entire preseason. He's looking at maybe to return by week one, and, you know, things keep getting worse and worse for Atlanta. Unless you believe in the U-Wing theory, which is kind of arbitrary in my opinion. Um, but when you think of it, First, they lost Rod Coleman, and I believe his name is Demorio Williams, in off-season accidents. And they're going to miss part of the season, it seems. 
if not the entire thing. They've sustained major injuries. I think one of them on a jet ski. And then, um, now, you know, the Vic situation is obviously very ugly. Brian Finneran got hurt, and he was the most reliable Atlanta receiver. So they don't have his abilities out of the slot anymore, which kind of really messes things up, in my opinion. I, I think he was an underrated receiving threat for Atlanta, and now they've lost him two years in a row. Um, and now we're done having this surgery. You know, all that's left is for um, John Abraham to go down with his annual groin injury, and Atlanta's just been Atlanta would just be completely decimated, and it further. It seems like the stars are aligned for um, Harrington to get a third chance. It's amazing how many chances this guy gets. He goes to Miami. Culpepper goes down. He has to start. Now it looks like Vic's going to go down for the whole year, so he'll get another chance to start. It's incredible. But anyway, after this season, it looks like Atlanta is going to have a legitimate shot at Brian Brown. So um, I'll bet Petrino's got to be happy about that. You know, it's going to take a top three or top five pick to pull it off, but Atlanta is shaping out in such a way that I could definitely see that happening. Um, really, there isn't much else to talk about in the NFL right now. Um, you know, my Mariners have been just completely falling off. The last couple of games, six or seven game losing streak, kind of bleh. But, um... You know, we're still eight games above 500, and that's a lot better than I thought we would be. So, um, just holding on and hoping something can happen. You know, I, I would like to pick up a big bat before the trading, uh, before the trading deadline ends. Uh, maybe we could even trade for Griffey. How freaking awesome would that be? But, yeah. Um, oh yeah, it looks like Adam Carricker. The first round pick of the St. Louis Rams signed. Giants signed Aaron Ross and Steve Smith. Baltimore and Miami, Baltimore got their pick down. Uh, looks like Simeon Rice might get cut. Or... Wait a minute. I'm sorry. They signed... The Buccaneers just recently managed to sign Gain, Gaines Adams, and then they just uh, released Simeon Rice. So, I'm sure a team is going to try and land them. I'm thinking Detroit... They could use uh, another defensive end to go along with um, their nice defensive tackles. So some team is going to get a pretty good pass rusher, even if he is a bit old. And, uh, you know, that's all i got to say. So uh, I'm out. Remember, send in those requests if you got them.